it's this tiny little dark spot in this mind that the mind is riveted on. It, it's focused on this dark spot. It's, it's put its attention on this dark spot so much that it's lost itself in this dark spot. It's, it's lost in this little dark spot of, of ego. And this vast light mind, it's more like Jesus is saying, Come over here, look somewhere else, <laughs> you know, anywhere else, it doesn't really matter. Where else you, wherever else you look, all it is is love and light. And you're focused on this little instant. And that's why he teaches only an instant does this world endure. You were saying how what we were talking about starts to bring everything down to one little point. This is the point, this little dark spot. Now this unholy instant was, was very, very terrifying to a mind that was created as only love and light. It, this little dark spot is so different from heaven, so different than nirvana, there's really no comparison. It's, it's, heaven is just pure love and light and this little dark spot is, is terrorizing, it's, it's horrific. It's, it's intensely unlike heaven in every way. And basically, the, the Course in Miracles is just about having you raise up that, anything that you believe about that darkness, into conscious awareness and giving it over to the Holy Spirit. That when the mind experienced the fall from grace, it was so terrifying that it made up a defense system to dilute the terror. That's what defenses do, they minimize fear without letting it go. So all defense mechanisms in the mind, if any of you have studied psychology, you know about all these defense mechanisms. All these ego defense mechanisms are made up to minimize fear without letting it go. And that's why it can seem to take a long, long, long time to let go of the ego completely because these layers of defense are guarding against exposing this little spot of darkness in the mind. It's in the Course of Miracles Jesus says there's obstacles to peace and the final obstacle to peace is the fear of God's love. It's like going down uh, to like a contract that was made. You made a contract, you made a bargain with the devil, you made an agreement with Satan, you made a, a contract with this error that you would never look upon this thing and raise it to doubt. You know, it's almost like a promise, like, okay, I'll believe this. I'll believe this lie. And then the rest of it has been running away in time and space trying to hide because of the terror of this. But really, this terrible instant is just one little speck, it's one spot. And that's why you open to the Holy Spirit to overlook that, to turn away from that, to not put your attention on something that is actually over and gone. That, that little spot was answered the instant it seemed to happen. So the correction is already there, it's in your mind. In fact, your mind is lit up and there's just this tiny little dark spot called the unholy instant. And all you have to do is really turn your attention away from it. Perception is very selective, so you just perceive what you believe. And as long as you believe in this dark spot, you will perceive a world that is acting out this darkness. That's why we seem to have wars, that's why we have plagues and we have diseases, destruction, you know, storms and all kinds of destructive things, terrorism and all these things are all just projections of this tiny little spot in the mind that has already been corrected. It's, it's a comforting set of words. Already been corrected. It's over and gone. The key word is gone. <laughs> Jesus says you just keep reliving this tiny instant of terror. <clears throat> That's what generates time. Just reliving the same mistake. Except you relive it in many, many different forms. Jesus, you know, at one point told Helen Shuckman, history would not exist if you didn't keep reliving the same mistake. That's what linear time is, that's what all of history is, is just 
reliving the same mistake over and over, as if it's still here, and it is gone, it is, it is over and gone. Actually, the truth is it never happened in the first place, but this is where Jesus has to work in the Course with the mind that believes that it did. He's just trying to say, no, no, look, look elsewhere in your mind. Don't keep focusing on the error. The error is a grievance. And what does it take to have a grievance? You must believe that there's something outside of you that has the power to hurt you, to have a grievance. But if you're the Holy Son of God, if you're the Buddha nature, if you're the One, as they talk about in the Matrix, how can there be something outside of you that can harm you? If you were created by God to be perfect. So it's just taking this attention that's been riveted on this tiny spot, he calls it in the course of the gap, this tiny gap. And we've been minding the gap so long. I mean, how many people do you know that really fall down through the crack when they hop off the train? I've never seen it. Yet, incessantly, we're told, mind the gap, mind the gap, mind the gap. Fear, don't fall through that gap. <laughs> it's only this big, I mean, you know, it's like, you really, you know, you think it's worth that much attention every day? Mind the gap, mind the gap, mind the gap. You, you know, chances of you falling through a crack this big, how many of us could fit through the gap? None of us. They just don't want your foot to get cut in there and everything, you know. It's, we have to learn to put our attention somewhere else. That's what all spiritual practice is about, is put, getting your mind into, into God, into devotion, into love. Uh, there's one workbook lesson that says, the name of God is my inheritance. And he, in that same set of lessons, he's asking you to, to at one point he'll say, try to think of only the name of God today. Think of nothing else. Just the name of God. He's asking you to focus a whole day. If you imagine <laughs> the day, okay, that's all I've got to think about. But he's trying to, to get you to turn your attention away from the gap, away from this darkness, and open up to the light. For most human beings, that's like, what? What does that, how do I do that? Think of, only think of the name of God. It's just giving you an alternative to all these thousands and thousands of ego thoughts about the past and the future. And he's saying, just give your mind over to the truth, you know, give it over to God, give it over to oneness.